Hey guys, how are you here from the Art Gear Guide? Thanks very much for joining me today. Well, as you can see here, I've got a review of the Artex um, brand new brush tip markers. Now, um, not that long ago, about eight or nine months ago, maybe not even that far back, uh, Artex um, reached out to me and asked me to review their fine nib markers. Uh, some people call them bullet nibs. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think the company itself is relatively new uh, in the grand scheme of things, but um, they're certainly new to the market with regards to markers, the these types of markers, uh, the, the fine nib markers uh, with the chisel nib in one side, and now the brush nib markers with uh, chisel nib as well. So... Um, I'll have a link for the, the fine nib markers down below, but originally they came out with an 80 set and a 36 set of skin tones. Uh, and then very, very quickly they upgraded the range and they came out with these colour coded sets. So you, you had like a, a red, purple, blue, greys, greens and a yellows. Um, all of them were sets of 24 or 40. So these were extra colours that you could obviously add to the collection. And they also brought out a 90 set. So that was quite a collection. Now the 90 set was a duplicate of the 80 set. Um, it, I think it had a few more greys in it. Um, so obviously if you had the 80 set it wasn't any, it wasn't beneficial to go out and buy the 90 set. Um, but nevertheless it expanded the range quite significantly. I really enjoyed the markers as well. They had a really nice flow, the ink flow. Uh, of all the markers I've ever used, the chisel nib on those markers were excellent. I don't know whether it was the way they were cut or something. I, I'm not too sure, but I ordinarily avoid chisel nibs. But on those, I was really quite happy. So again, they reached out to me and they said, listen, how would you take a look at our brush nib markers? And I was only too happy to do so because I absolutely love using markers. You know that by now, I'm sure. Um, I use uh, my favorite thing to, my favorite mediums to use together are marker and color pencil. Um, and I particularly enjoy using brush nib markers. So as with the first set, they have come out with uh, an 80 set of assort assorted colours and a 36 set of skin tone markers. But this time, they've done things slightly differently. So the last time, the sets came in boxes and the boxes were kind of like also stands. This time, done things a little bit different. So let's take a look at the, the, the boxes that they come in, everything that you get inside the box, uh, and then we'll take it from there. So the first box I'm going to show you is the 80 box. Now, when I got this, it was really different from any other marker packaging I've ever used or, or bought in the past. Um, I opened the box and I couldn't see any markers. There was an awful lot of stuff on top of the markers. And I thought to myself, what, well, this is really different. So the first thing that um, I was presented with was this kind of like woven plastic bag. Now, the the style of the bag may not be to everybody's um, taste, but nevertheless, it's a functional bag that you can keep all your markers in. But they've done a couple of extra clever things with these bags, and I'll show that to you in a second. The bags also come with shoulder straps, so if you want to use a shoulder strap, you can do. Um, they clip onto the, the D-rings at the side, and so it just means that it's a, a an easier form of carrying. Um, also inside the box were these little plastic bags and inside the plastic bags there was uh, blue and yellow perspex, clear perspex. I'll show you more about those in a second but uh, they are little bits of perspex that you assemble together in order to create like a plinth. Next up was the... Um, there was like a, a little strip of stickers which are obviously more aimed towards the younger artists among us, amongst us, uh, which is no problem. Then after that, they had um, a swatch 
sheet in there. So immediately you could get down to creating your swatch on the paper that they have provided. Uh, also on the swatch is the number that corresponds to the marker and the um, the pigment name or the mark the ink color name as well um, on the swatch. So once you do it all out, you've you've got this handy little swatch thing that you can keep for your future reference when you're using the markers. Now I have done my own swatches on some uh, Bristol Smooth paper. I just prefer to do that because that's ordinarily the paper that I would use when I'm using markers and so I can get a good representation of what those colours are going to look like on the paper. L different papers will look slightly different, uh, will will change the appearance of the colours sometimes so it's important to, to bear that in mind. Uh, also inside the um, box is this little instruction booklet. Now on the instruction booklet, I know it might you might think it's teaching you to suck eggs, but you know if you're new to markers or you're new to alcohol markers or anything at all like that, it's it's actually beneficial to have this. And inside there, it lets you know what's inside the box. So just in case you're missing anything, tells you you know alcohol markers smell. This is normal. Uh, a lot of people don't know that and so when they get alcohol markers and they really badly smell they think something's wrong with them but you know they're letting you know there's this is uh, normal uh, other little things like the caps need to be covered uh, after use otherwise the ink will uh, dry up also you know a little explanation into how these little plinths work so I'll get into that in a second and the next thing is that they have is in the 80 set they have this two um, clear marker grids they both hold 40 markers each so if you just take a look here um, this is how these um, little grids look um, but they work in conjunction with the plinths and I, I'll, I'll just show you that now. So I'm just lifting out these markers. Obviously, these marker grids can be used any which way you want. Um, if you're using the markers on the desk and you want to keep them up like that, a lot of marker artists will prefer to keep them horizontally as opposed to vertically because the, the ink can run down to one nib or the other. Um, and so they prefer to keep them like that which is where these little plinths come in. So, if we take a look at these these little plinths, they have these little notches and there's a crossbar here. So you just insert the notch into the other notch and they're relatively sturdy. Uh, and then you set it on the on your desk and then you use your grid now down at the very bottom of these little uh, plinths there's little notches on the the curled side they actually slot into the um, the back of these marker grids uh, just to hold everything in place. Now when I first opened the set, I didn't look at the instruction thing and I just tried to balance the um, I tried to balance the markers on the plinth and it just wasn't working um, because the markers were too top heavy and it was toppling over. So you do need to make sure that you put these into the back of the the um, the marker grid and it will keep all your markers in place it'll stop them from toppling over so that was everything that was inside the the 80 set box and the 36 skin tone box was pretty much exactly the same only it came with um, a different design on the for the bag obviously slightly smaller bag now another very clever thing that they've done here with these bags is they've made sure that they have made them the right size so that these plinths, that these marker um, grids slot into the bottom of the say like the, the 80 bag. The two 
marker grids slot into the bottom of the, the bags and then you can keep all your markers, the full 80 count, inside the bags all in order. So when you're out and about traveling around or anything like that, nothing's going to happen with the markers as opposed to just dumping them in the bag, which you can do if you want. But um, if you do something like that, it's well, it can take a long time to, to find a marker that you're wanting. So th this way, it's really simple, really easy. Now, it is a tight fit, but I'm sure as time goes on and the bag stretches a little bit and the, and the material becomes a little bit softer with the use, um, it might be not as tight a fit. But nevertheless, that's not a bad thing because obviously if it was too big and you had these two plinths, uh, these two uh, marker grids in there, the, the markers would just roll all over the place in any case and become loose. Um, so they fit in exact. So you can, s so first of all, we'll have a look at the, like I say, the, the actual markers. So along, they are, they're a little bit different than the previous marker, um, the, the barrel shape, but, um, and they're slightly different color. These ones are kind of like a, a, a light gray, whereas the other markers are white. Um, on one side of the barrel, it says Ar Artex, and then the name of the marker, which is Oro's Sketch Marker. Then after that, there is a um, barcode, and then on either side of the marker, there is clear indication as to which end is the brush tip and which end is the chisel tip. Both ends of the caps are numbered uh, and obviously with the swatch that they provided for you that number corresponds on the swatch and there is a pigment name there as well so you will be able to find out the pigment name by corresponding the number with your swatch um, the chisel the chisel um, nib is exactly the same as the the uh, the previous markers so again I have no issues with this at all I think it's cut really well um, and it lays down a really nice coverage of um, dye now here's the part that everybody is uh, really wanting to get in and find out about so these brush nibs apparently are from Japan um, I've spoke to Artex about it they are are from Japan um, I know sometimes these type or, or s certain budget range, range markers, they can, like for example, the Spectrum Noir Illustrator, when they first came out, they had these really nice crisp um, brush nibs, but then after a little while of use, they frayed and they became quite, you know, useless. Obviously, Spectrum Noir have now sorted that out. But um, the I have used these markers quite extensively since I got them, and um, none of them thus far have, um, you know, frayed or, or or lost their shape or anything like that. The coverage and the flow um, that they give is superb. Uh, sometimes you'll get markers and the they ooze out ink and it just goes all over the place and you can't control it and it's just useless um and then you you can get other markers where the the brush nibs are just bone dry and not working very well these markers from artex are really really nice really beautiful as i said i have done my own swatch so this is the 80 swatch so you can see here the, the colors that they have put in now th this is the, the colors inside this set are the same as the um, the 80 set that they had with the fine nib markers so uh, I personally think it's a really nice range really good selection of yellows light yellows as well there's some really um, light colors in in this set overall which is which is really nice 
Uh, and they've got a nice selection of greys. They've got a, a four warm greys. They've got a couple of green greys. And some blue greys as well. Uh, and they've got a cool grey as well. I am guessing. And it's purely speculatory on my part. Because um, the company hasn't got back to me just yet on this question. But I am guessing that the brush markers will go the same way that their fine nib markers went. In so much as that they will come out with colour coded sets. And obviously increase the range. And if they do that. Then I'm telling you something now. Um, with with regards to how the Japanese company, who has been the industry standard for markers for such a long time, with regards to how they are really upsetting their customer base, companies like Artex and other companies that I've spoke about as well, who have come out with these brush tip markers, are going to be able to take a lot of those customers away from the, the Japanese company. Um, and in, in all fairness, I have the full range of those Japanese markers. So I, I use them on a regular basis. And there is very little to no difference whatsoever with these Artex brush markers in comparison to those. The only thing that the, the Japanese markers have over Artex at the minute is the color range. But even then... With 365 colours, I think it is. That can be overwhelming. And there's a lot of colours that are very, very similar. I think when you start getting up into 300 odd different colours. Then you start running into issues of things like. Um, colours being too similar and stuff like that. Whereas if Artex do what they did with their, their fine nib markers. And expand the range to 196 or something I think it is. In total. Um then there will be an awful lot of people who will go out to the, the Artex brush tip marker and uh, another couple of markers that I've spoke about on this channel. So um, that's really, really good news for um, marker artists. So the, uh, the 36 set as well, you can see here, beautiful range of skin tones, really, really nice, you know, um, it's a, it's an excellent selection, and like I say, the the con the control that you have with these markers is superb. Now I done these swatches on um, Bristol smooth paper Bristol board. Um, that's what I always kind of like do my marker swatches on. But I um, I completed this artwork using just the Artex um, brush nib markers and I also used some of their fine nib markers as well just to show that you know they work hand in hand together that there's no issues with these markers working together and um, I done this on some Strathmore 400 series mixed media paper so that paper has a little bit more texture to it a little bit more absorbency level which, in my opinion, only helps to control the flow of dye or ink, whatever you want to call it, uh, a little bit better than when it's on the really super smooth paper. So I absolutely really loved doing this piece of artwork here. Um, I did it because I, I chose this Scooby-Doo thing because my little niece, it was her birthday, and she's Scooby-Doo mad, and she, it just gave me an idea to do a Scooby-Doo drawing for this um to, to help demonstrate these markers but as you can see here you know there's no streakiness or anything like that with the markers there's no uh blotchiness n none of that um the the colors are the coverage is perfect uh and like i say the flow from these brush nibs is also perfect there's no oozing of of ink or anything like that or th there's none i in my 80 set, in any case, and my 36 set of skin tone, I didn't come across any of the markers that had a dry brush nib. Um, I think one of the I think one of the nibs was a little bit bent, um, but that was it. Um, I'll have to have a look and see if I can find that that marker. 
but that was maybe just a quality control thing and it just maybe slipped past the quality control but out of 80 markers plus the 36 skin markers having one that was slightly bent i don't think that's too bad so long as they keep an eye on that and they make sure that you know too many don't go out like that I think this company is going to go a long way with these markers. I think a lot of marker artists are going to absolutely love. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, the Artex Oros um, blending. So I've got four different blues here, uh, all relatively, you know, dark, mid-tone lights type thing. So uh, and I'm, I'm using some. Bristol smooth paper here the same paper that I use for um, the same paper I use to do the swatches so I'm just coming down the light scale you know I'm not even doing this properly really if I was doing it properly let actually so when you start blending in colors you you want to do that if you flick like this you know you start off at the the darkest part and you flick in like that uh, and then you get your next color and you flick back it helps to create that seamless blend and so the next color is going to come in here so again we need to keep going out you can see how i'm I'm not too sure if you can see just how juicy these markers are but there's like I say there's no oozing of ink or anything like that so now we come in with the next color I know it's a slightly different blue, but nevertheless, we'll just keep going, work it, working with it. But you'll see here how how well these these markers just blend in with each other, and then we'll go to this this lighter blue. And there you go so that is a really nice blend obviously it'll it'll dry out this is where i think if uh artex come out with the same range that they have done with the fine nib markers um because when when they brought out those color coded sets uh they were superb they offered much more in terms of uh fam proper like family groups of blues and reds and greens and things like that so that you could do your blending and um, it worked absolutely seamlessly. So that's my review of the um, the new Artex Oros uh, brush markers, the, the Oros sketch markers. Um, I'm incredibly impressed with them thus far. Obviously, you know, if things change later on down the line after excessive use and things start to go wrong with them, I will obviously update uh, my review. But as things stand now, this is quite a big art piece that I did with them. And obviously I did a little bit of uh, swatching and some other tests with the markers, all of which worked really well. There was no problems whatsoever in any of the tests that I did. Trying them on different papers, that type of thing. Um, the... I tried them on the, the the papers that I would ordinarily use if I was doing uh, any marker art, which was really the, the, the mixed media type papers and the Bristol Smooth papers. And you can also get these um, much thinner papers that are in like um, pads that you can get from markers as well. They're not ideal for doing your, your you know, your, your proper real good um, artwork. But they are good for practicing on, for doing like marker sketches and things like that. Nevertheless, um, they they performed well in all the tests that I've done. I'm absolutely in love with these markers. Um, and like I say, if 
if Artex can come out with the same color coded sets that for the for the brush tip markers that they did with the fine nib markers, you know, I think that's going to be fantastic, absolutely amazing. It will be, uh, and the prices, like I say, um, over on the written review of the Art Gear Guide, I've got links to where you can get the sets that are available now, and obviously the prices now because of COVID and because of uh, Brexit and things like that, a lot of art companies are having big difficulties getting their products to certain countries. So, because ordinarily I do a list of uh, pricing for U the US, Europe and the UK. And uh, once Amazon get things sorted out in Australia, I'll do the same there. And um, But... The way things are at the minute, it's really difficult for me to get the pricing in other countries. But just purely because these companies are running low on stock in certain countries, they can't get materials out. Uh, and so as soon as things pick back up again, hopefully after this pandemic calms down and is eradicated, you know, I'll, I'll upgrade all the, all the prices and what have you. But the prices for the UK I have at the minute, and I think the prices in Europe and uh, the US are available also for these Artex right now because they're quite new. So I'll have all those prices over on the written review of the Art Gear Guide and links to where you can get your own sets if you wish to do so. Also, when you talk about alcohol markers, alcohol markers aren't light fast tested or anything like that. They don't have any light fast capabilities. So if you're going to be doing artwork and it's something that you want to give to somebody or you're going to hang up in your house or something like that and in particular if you're going to be putting colored pencil on top of it the best thing to do is to put it behind some uv glass some sort of glass that's going to protect it from sunlight uh, and that way you will have your your light fast resistancy really uh, they just haven't got i i don't know what the issue is I, I'm not 100% sure I haven't really looked into it I don't really know why but I'm sure it's got something to do with the alcohol content in these markers now like I briefly alluded to earlier on there the the Japanese markers um, which I'm not going to name but you all know what I'm talking about they've been the industry standard for so long now um, they have really really disgruntled a lot of their loyal customers that their customers have had for years now and it's companies like Artex and Art and & Fly and Spectrum Noir that are coming out now with these really really top quality markers and they're going to put a huge dent in the Japanese company's um, market share. Now another thing that is probably uh, a a downside to these markers right now is that you can't buy the markers open stock and nor can you um, buy refills for them just yet so with I'm not too sure I have asked the company and I hopefully they'll get back to me but whichever route they choose to go down whether they choose to do open stock or rather than that they choose to do refills or whether they choose just not to do any of it that remains to be seen and um, I think if they're, I, th I especially think with the work that they've put into these brush markers and their fine nib markers, they are beautiful markers and with the work that they've put into them, I think going forward, especially if they bring, if they expand this range like they did with the fine nib markers, I think it would be so beneficial for them to e either sell them open stock or sell refills for them one of the two because i think that would really put these markers into a lot of people's hands that uh, they may not ordinarily get to anyway guys i'm rambling thanks very much for watching the review i really look forward to seeing you all again soon thanks bye